listening to the Construction Big Breakfast, where we give you a hearty serving of insider tips and business strategies to help fuel your day so you can thrive in the construction industry. Now, here's your host. Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Tip Top Tim Fitch, and welcome to the Construction Big Breakfast. Today, we'll be diving into all sorts of interesting topics, including how my guest and I came uh, ended up sat in this room in uh, Bloomsbury, because there's an interesting story there. Uh, we're going to talk about comparing the Oxford University MSc in Major Project Management with the UCL MSc in Strategic Management of Projects. Uh, and we're probably going to talk about Industry 4.0 as well. So it should be a very interesting podcast. And joining me today is my good friend and very special guest, Ricardo. Cosentino. Welcome to the podcast, Ricardo. Can you give me give our listeners and viewers a little introduction about yourself? Hello, um, Tim. Um, I'm Ricardo Cosentino. Um, I'm originally from Italy, but I'm currently living in UK, but I've also come from Canada. I'm a civil engineer by trade, and I've, I've I kind of evolved in my career. I'm doing less civil engineering now, more program management and investments. Um, I should probably disclose my age. I don't have a problem. I'm 46 years old, um, and um, and uh, I'm here to have a, an interesting discussion with you this morning. It is going to be great, Ricardo. It's really tremendous to have you here today. Uh, uh, we'll, it'll all come out in the podcast as to why I'm quite excited. But, of course, the first question that everybody gets asked is, uh, before we get into the proper meat and potatoes of the podcast, and for our vegan listeners, that's potatoes and potatoes, um, I know the answer to this, but tell me, what did you have for breakfast today? Well, I had a nice bacon sandwich with obviously red sauce. Yeah, and uh, I can say to our viewers, I had a bacon roll, clearly with brown sauce. And what we've in the show notes, or now in the picture now, you should see uh, the photograph of the taxi shack in Russell Square, where I bought uh, these bacon rolls uh, not long ago from Jude. Now Jude is a, she makes an excellent classic. You know, taxi drivers, bacon roll. So I thoroughly recommend that. Three pounds each. Really good. Anyway, Ricardo, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the 40s. I've said that joke. I think we need to explain how we know each other. Can you remember when we first met? Yeah, it was sometime probably 2002. Um, I, I applied for a job at uh, Cementation Scan Scan. I remember coming to coming to interview in the old office. It was about a couple of months before it was demolished. Yes. And uh, got the interview. I was I was a civil engineer working in contracting at the time, and uh, you hired me as a as a young project manager to to work on your railway business. Yeah, I remember it well. And then we eventually, not long after that, we got involved in what at the time seemed like a, a very, very difficult, stressful, massively complex project, which at the time it was for us, wasn't it? It was extending the platforms at Trim Station. But I mean, it was a, a career-defining experience for me. Um, you know, first of all, I, I got to work on the West Coast Mainline Group Modernization. I mean, that's an iconic uh, project. At the time, I, I didn't realize, but, you know, I kind of melted that in my resume for the last 20 years, so... Keep doing it, <laughs> keep doing it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was stressful. It was, uh, it was a high-profile project. Uh, it was a high-profile um, sub-project sub with, with, the, with the platform. It was part of a much, com much more complex uh, delivery. But uh, for me, it was career defining because it taught me, taught me a lot of soft skills as well as hard skills in working in complex, in complex projects. Yes, uh, I think there was a lot to be learned. You could see how the whole subcontractor, main contractor dynamic worked, and how 
you know, there's good and bad parts to that, but uh, we got through it. Got done. I remember Job got built. I remember one of the, our Sabi, you know, the, the day we finished, we were almost finished, and I remember calling him because I wasn't quite happy with, with how the job was had been finished and the guy told me it, it, it does the platform is the platform black and I said yes well then and the job is done. Well and uh, it's still there, it's still working all these years later. Which is, as you, but I, I think one of the interesting things about that is that some of not just this relationship between me and you, but the, there are other relationships with people you met on that project. And you've still got them in Canada, isn't that right? That's correct. There's a, there's a project director that used to work for Mattel at the time. He's actually now working on one of the projects I financed, uh, Bill Henry. Um, so it's... it's you so know, this is a question of where you know, the young project yeah. manager is now in charge of the big guy at the time. I can remember. We won't say who he is, but... Uh, <clears throat> he was a big cheese, wasn't he? Yes. He used to fly around in a helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. But that show, that's interesting for people, though, how your careers develop and you can catch people up and sometimes get above them, depending on circumstances and your ability. So that took us through to around 2003. So what happened then? 2003, um, I, I, I'd been in the UK at the time for nine years. Uh, I'm originally from Italy, so I think it was, you know, I think I needed a break. I think, uh, I think train took a toll on me, so I wanted a bit of a change, ended up going back to Italy and then decided to change, take a turn in my career, decided to do an MBA and that's, yeah. that's how I ended up in Canada, uh, to do a Master in Business Administration. Uh, the, I had the aspiration of changing career altogether and uh, ended up not doing that, I ended up actually leveraging my previous experience and ended up working with a provincial agency that does procurement of major infrastructure using the P3 model. And then uh, following that, I was hired by SNC Lavalin after four years, and I've been with SNC for the last 11 years. Well, we'll just come back to SNC in a minute. <coughs> for our British viewers, yeah. just explain okay. what P3 means. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if I can use the word, but I'm going to use it. It's, it's the PFI model. Uh, and it's, you know, in Canada, it's called Public Private Partnership, shortened for P3. And that is a British import, isn't it? it I'm is often totally told that, usually with a slight grimace. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're now in Toronto working for SNC Lavalin. You're on right in the centre downtown. I assume that's where you, yeah, you, that's you're still where you started. So, what have you been doing with uh, SNC Lavalin these past few years? I mean, with SNC, my, my role has been for the last Ten and a half years has been about uh, developing, bidding, developing, and investing, and and as and managing major infrastructure projects. So large, complex road, highways, transit system. Uh, Canada and Ontario has been quite busy. Um, so there's been a, a, a healthy pipeline of opportunities coming through Ontario. So I've been bidding probably, you know, 20, 25 large projects. Um, couple of billion, one, one to two billion dollars uh, in size and I was successful enough to win five of those and so wow. my company has delivered those, I made the investment, raised the capital and then uh, because we make the investment I then oversee the investment over, over after construction and during operation and maintenance phase. And I, saw, I, mean, I looked on your LinkedIn profile, I mean there was there's been some massive projects. There's a huge bridge that you've... Yeah, so the Champlain Bridge, uh, about 2.1 billion uh, in Montreal. It, it, it was replacing an existing bridge that was built in the 60s that was poorly designed, it was falling down. Uh, so we actually built that. We, we were racing against the clock. We had to build it um, in record time because the old bridge was past its expiry. Uh, so we build that, we're now operating and maintaining that. I'm part of, I'm, I'm a board of director of, of the special purpose vehicle that is uh, operating that bridge for the, for the government of Canada. Um, the other big one is... How do you get those? Is it shadow tolls? No, it's actually... So it's an access road. It's yeah. a, it used to be a, there used to be a toll road, a toll bridge, but then with the changing government, they scraped the toll um, and they just pure availability. 
And then the, la the next, the other very, very large project is the Adelington Cross Town, which is, you know, under construction, towards the end of construction, it's about 4.7 roughly billion. And similar, we did, that's a 18 kilometer tri light rail system in, in Toronto. We've got one or two of our clients working on that project. Uh, so we're, we're very familiar with it. It's a, it's a lovely thing. I mean, I was, it was great for me because I spent all my career in the last 20 years doing projects yes. a bit like that in London and then to get involved in Toronto was tremendous. Some of the same characters as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that was what was really interesting. And perhaps we, we'll come back to what you're doing now, but that really brings how, how do we rekindle our relationship because, um, well, I know how we did it. Because I did it, but uh, when I, when we decided to enter the Canadian market, I found myself in Toronto. Well, we knew I was going to Toronto. I thought, well, how, who do I know, if anybody, in Toronto? And I, literally, I just did a search on LinkedIn, um, filtered by Canada and then Toronto, and who was top of the list? Ricardo. So we had a coffee, we had lunch or coffee or something, didn't we? Because it wasn't just you, there was lots of other people who I'd either worked for, worked for me, or we'd done consulting work with in the UK and they'd emigrated. It was astounding. But of course, that's when I realised there was so much activity in the rail sector, you know, around Union Station and the uh, metro system. So. That's how it stuck rekindled after all those years, wasn't it? That was in 2018, must have been 2018, June or July. It was a pleasant surprise. It was a really pleasant surprise. And uh, yeah, I remember we think we had lunch. And, uh, and then we, every time we came back to Canada uh, pre pandemic, we would catch up for a coffee, drinks, um, breakfast, breakfast. A bit of breakfast, I remember. So that, yeah, that was, uh, I, I mean, and it's interesting, uh, and I think we talked about this, how, you know, the, 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 the strength, and I think the previous podcast that we to show that you, you discussed about networking and relationships, and... Uh, that was someone we both know. Yeah. yeah I think you know like, Divya better than I do. <laughs> For those that haven't tweaked, Divya shows uh, on a previous podcast, you married, and be, you met, didn't you? Yes. Not quite at work, but because you're in different build, same building, but different businesses. Wow. Well, okay, let's stick with that story. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Well, that's the official version. So, yeah, that that was the. the just referring back to the Divya's part, it was really, really fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. because of course, the yeah, you know, we met through you. Yes. Um, but how how. Yeah, I you can make, maintain uh, maintain relationships, particularly now with social media, even if it's very loose. Because I don't think we've been messaging each other every week or anything like that. But we were connected on LinkedIn, so it was therefore easy to get hold of you. A find out where you were, and B get hold of you. And that's how it restarted. Well, I think it's also I, I, the reason I like social media because you you can actually keep up to date uh, with with low effort. Right. I, I knew about your business launch. Um, you know, I was I was seeing your posting, I see your activity. So I kinda knew what was happening, not to the full extent. So when you actually connected was I was very curious. I, I've seen all these activities and I gotta get to find out exactly what Timmy has been up to. Yeah, that's right. I, mean, I think that's a lesson for people, that people are more interested in you than you might think. Yeah. And uh, Anyway, that, I think that's the lesson there, or one of the lessons. So, you're in Toronto, meet your wife, you're working with SNC Leveland in project finance and bidding these huge P, P3 schemes. Um, so, what are you doing in London? So, I, it really is it's, it's two fold things, and you know, you know, as you start one thing and then you tack on other things, but I you know, about two years ago, I decided that I needed to, you know, update my skill set. So I decided to, to start um, a part-time master degree, major project program management at Oxford. And as I, as I did that, then, you know, the, the master would take me here every two months for a week. 
Um, and then my my boss did kind of decided or tweaked that, oh, you're in London, we made an acquisition, well, you're in Oxford, you, we made an acquisition of a company three years ago, Atkins. Um, maybe there are, there, is, there are opportunities for you to look at that, at that business. Atkins is a very different type of company than SNC Lavalin. Um, SNC is more operational maintenance, construction, contracting. Atkins is a professional services firm, so we have very complementary skill sets and we also don't compete in geography. So SNC Lavalin is predominantly North America. Atkins is UK and Europe. Um, so she said, well, instead of coming back every two months, coming back to Canada after your module and going back after two months, why don't you stay there, work from there? You know, post-pandemic, it became very easy to work remotely and see what we can do. And as I, as I started um, working on that idea, I did a lot of work from Canada and try to understand the business. And we started discovering that there are significant amount of opportunities to to bring SNC leveling skill set into the UK market and leveraging Atkins client base and, 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 and know how in the local market. So I'm here to to be some business development and to see if I can grow I can grow the, the overall business. That sounds really exciting. It sounds like up my street really. <laughs> because yeah transferring skills into the UK and yeah you've got some stuff, they've got relationships, overlap, there's the sweet spot. That's basically our philosophy. That's why mm -hmm. we're in Canada. I mean, we thought we knew something that the Canadians didn't. Well, yeah. I think we were right. Our collaboration as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that's really interesting. So you're now studying at Oxford, which is amazing. This is it projects or programs? Major programs. I think. Yeah, major program management. You call them programs here, but yeah. Yeah. And I'm interested to hear about that, because as you know, um, um, viewers may not, this office, that building you can see out the window is the British Museum, we're in Bloomsbury. And one of the reasons we're here is it's close to UCL, uh, specifically the Barber, which is literally down that road, uh, which is where I studied a master's degree. But mine was, it's now called the Strategic Management of Projects. And I'd be interested to have a little chat about how different or close they are to each other, because I know some of the concepts we've had a chat beforehand. Uh, because it was a massive influence in my career, that thing which I did, I finished it in 2007. But that's really why I'm sat here doing this job now, it was because of that, um, philosophically and relationship-wise. Uh, you know some of our team, mm -hmm. many of them have got a master's degree, not necessarily that one, but the Project and Enterprise Management master's degree at UCL, architecture. Yeah, we've, it's been a happy relationship so far uh, and very fruitful. We've done research papers together, all that sort of stuff. So you've been very active on LinkedIn, um, interacting with uh, the world, in specifically one of the professors there, I guess is the course director. Yes, Ben Fluberg. Fluberg, yes. So the big influence on me were several people at UCL. Uh, Peter Morris, mm -hmm. who obviously wrote the seminal book with Pinto, introducing the concept of the management of projects, MOP. Uh, that was a massive influence on me. And of course, the other guy, was uh, he's just retired, was uh, Professor Henry Smythe, who I've collaborated on quite a lot of research and publications and things. Um, so I got a massive amount out of it. I'm sure you're getting but what what do you what do you, what do you tell me about the sort of the core concept at Oxford and let's see if it's massively different from what I did. Yeah I mean it is looking at, at, at major programs. I think they you know I always reflect on the fact that I've been in the industry for 20 years. I went to do a master's degree thinking, oh, I know it all, and I realized I, I, I knew nothing um, or very little. Um, the, the fascinating part is, it's, and it's a concept, I'm absorbing all this knowledge and I'm processing it. So my, my view on things change on a regular basis. Yes. But, you know, programs need, I think we, we always talk about project management, program management, but it really is about program leadership. And I think what this, this, these masters do is elevate the thinking from being a manager to being a leader. 
you know, these these are complex systems. They they need to be need to be led. And I think these these courses give you give you the the tool the tools and the know how to start leading the programs. You know, looking at a project, you know, you got the classic iron triangle of, of, of project management with the time quality and, and cost. And so that's that's the that's the management approach. However, you know, one thing that we learned is programs are temporary organizations. It's an organization, it's not time cost, it's people. And so people need to be organized and led, and it's the people that deliver the program. So it's really elevating the thinking that we have around around what we do. Um, and some of, you know, project management has been around, the concept of project management has been around since the 50s, 40s, right? And, uh, and has evolved very little. Um, and that's probably why we have certain issues in, in, in our industry. Well, I'm obviously going to agree with you. Uh, <laughs> and I think if one, once Crossrail has been unraveled, because it was run, it, when, the, when the thing was first set up and procured, it was definitely Iron Triangle stuff, uh, very command and control, but I won't go into too much detail. But it, we, did, we, we had a look at it many years ago, and you could see the issues then. And of course, they're trying to build a system, aren't they? Yeah. Got a bunch of projects. Yeah, I mean, system thinking is the other, you know, for me as being, uh, again, I never come across system thinking before. Um, and but then system thinking has been around for 40 years in other industries, and I think our industry is now starting to look at it. Um, you know, we, we, we've always had a reductionist approach on things. Um, we, we don't seem to be, as an industry, being able to deal with complexity, so we like to reduce the complexity, uh, but that doesn't make the complexity go away. You need to tackle the complexity. We can ignore it, can't we? Yeah. Which is usually what happens. Yes. And then you get an out term, which is fairly predictable, you should. Okay, so you're feeling that it's another, this is perhaps the same as me, that it's, it's going to, it's changing the way you think, obviously that's the whole point of it. You're going to, who knows where that's going to take you. Yes. I know with me, it took a few years for it to process it yeah. after the event. Uh, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I mean, that, that's the, one of the reasons I, I started be more active on LinkedIn. It's also because it's, that's a good way for me to process it and verbalize it and, 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 and form, form my voice. No, no, absolutely. And you, because they're thoughtful posts, you're getting interaction, um, which means a wider audience see it anyway. So it's a virtuous circles and do that kind of thing. So I'm guessing your master's degree has got similar uh, structures to the one I did, that you do various modules and then you have to do a big project or dissertation. Can you off top of your head remember what the modules are just for a Yeah, year? so it's a design of organisation, designing of a temporary organisation, uh, risk which is a fascinating because it's not the risk that I knew. Um, uh, cost co controls, so project controls. Um, uh, in corporate corporate uh, diplomacy, so stakeholder management, corporate diplomacy. Interesting, yeah. Um, leadership, and I think there's a module where they teach us how to write, how to select and write a dissertation. And there's another module there. Oh, uh, com um, commercial leadership. So we look at contracts and you know type of contracts and you know alliances versus contracting, relational contracting. So yeah, I think there's a uh, and then there's a capstone module at the end of February. Right, that pulls it all together. Yes. Yeah. But so, well, I'm sure you're enjoying. It sounds fascinating. It, um, yeah, I know with my experience, it was a tremendous thing. Uh, we did the same sort of way as well, part time. Yeah. That's great. So, what's what's your thinking around what your dissertation is going to be? So, my dissertation is going to be. Uh, we obviously, as you well know, we're in the fourth industrial revolution, um, and so 
there are particular skills in the construction industry that are needed in order to be successful in the, in the fourth uh, industrial revolution. And so I want to look at how my company is, I would like to look, because it's not been approved, but I would like to look how my company is, um, is prepared. We, the individual in my, com in my company are prepared to tackle the uh, challenges of the fourth industrial revolution. And looking at my company as a major uh, professional services firm, using that as a case study to sort of get a sense how the industry is also prepared to tackle that if for IR. So just for, for absolute clarity, we, are we talking about Atkins or SNC? Is it Canada Focus, UK no, Focus? No, it will be, uh, it'll be across, across because I, because I, it, it's going to be both uh, one company. We are one company, uh, so SNC Laval, Atkins is part of SNC Laval, and so we will look across geography because obviously I, I'm going to break it down into into sectors and geography, right? That's how that's how I'm going to break down the data set. I mean, it's, you, I mean, the thing, it's such a massive company, isn't it? Yes. You could have a, you could get a lot of data, which uh, it could be a really important piece of work. So I mean, it sounds fascinating. Look forward to reading it from my yeah. house. <laughs> it's all finished. Ricardo, I recovered quite a lot of ground. Um, so, I suppose on that note, let's wrap up this conversation. It's been very, very insightful. Thank you for joining me um, today, Ricardo. If any of our listeners want to get hold of you, shall we put your LinkedIn address in the show yes, notes absolutely. and they could get to you that way? Um, We'll also put a link in to, presumably Atkins has got a website, yes. SNC Lowland obviously have, so we'll put that all be in the show notes. Um, anyway, that's terrific. Wonderful. So, to all of our listeners today, um, thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Construction Big Breakfast, and as you know, we have an episode every two weeks. In fact, I think we might be increasing that to every week. So click the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and don't miss an episode. While you're at it, we'd appreciate a five-star review. And if you've enjoyed this episode today, please like it and share it, as this helps us gain more listeners and viewers. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, or looking to collaborate in other ways, visit us at uh, www.invent.com, double N at the end, links in the description, fill out the contact form and one of my team will be in touch. So, see you next time. Bye. Want to learn more about how Invent can help your business maximize its bottom line? Head on over to www.invent.com and get in touch with our team today. Thanks for joining us this week on the Construction Big Breakfast. Make sure to visit our website, www.invent.com where you can subscribe to the Construction Big Breakfast on all platforms so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a positive rating. Or if you'd simply share it with a friend, that would help us out too. Be sure to tune in for our next episode.